so first is we are going to study about the nagara style all right so majorly you will find this nagara style in north india north india so right ne region so it is flourished in north west and eastern india except bengal so bengal we have a different style all right particularly in malwa rajputana and kalinga regions all right so base of the temples if you see they are constructed on a simple stone platform unlike the elaborate plinth seen in the dravidian style so they are uh, nagara style temples are built on a raised platform so it is it is one of the important features good evening students welcome back to plutus is right uh today is our 69th day right today is our 69th day so as the time passes by our lectures also one by one they are getting completed and uh, this with this lecture we have entered into we have entered into art and architecture uh, subject right we have entered into art and architecture right so uh, as you know this is also an important topic in terms of uh, prelims examination right so we have seen many questions uh, previously asked from the uh, art and culture part also so not only from the point of view of prelims examination mains also you have specially uh, you do not have uh, the ancient and medieval history only they are asking or in the syllabus they have given art and architecture topics only so from that point of view also uh, it is important topic so in the mains you have only art and architecture and the modern india history part right so not only from prelims point of view it is also important from the mains perspective also right so this is a very familiar topic all most of the things you will be knowing already uh, i guess so however it will uh, help you brush up your knowledge knowledge once again uh, before the examination right so from the ancient india approximately the temple ar architecture began uh, i mean uh, on a large scale it has began from the guptan age so before that also uh, we have a primitive type of temples we cannot say it is exa exactly a temple architecture or sorry exactly temples but we can see primitive forms uh, of the temples before guptans also so some evidence or some historians uh, say that the temple architecture uh, actually began in the south india only first so there is a, a local small dynasty called that is ikshvakus ikshvakus they are uh, i mean they were ruling in the present day uh, andhra pradesh region Uh, in the guntur uh, guntur region gurchun uh, guntur nagarjuna konda uh, there is a particular place so there we got the evidence of temple building activity uh, that is the earliest uh, known uh, known place for the construction of temples uh, when it comes to indian subcontinent so one more thing is that the temple temple architecture or the activity of building temples it originated first in the hinduism only later it was adapted and refined further refined by uh, buddhism and jainism also right so uh, this is a brief introduction about the temple architecture apart from that you know very well there are the uh, e temple architecture uh, we can divide uh, the architectural types into broadly uh, three types so there are two major dominating styles that is one thing is nagara nagara style it is also alternatively known as the north indian style and there is uh, dravida style which is popular which is popular in uh, south india and uh, there is a hybrid style that is known as vesara style it has mentioned as vesara style in the ancient uh, scriptures or manuscripts this style we see in the uh, the uh, middle area or we can say vindan region uh middle part of the uh, country 
we can say broadly the northern deccan also northern deccan also uh, sorry that the vesara style is predominant in the northern dakar so the practitioners or the patronage uh, the rulers or dynasties who patronaged the vesara style are chalukyas rashtrakutas rashtrakutas and other few dynasties are there they were popularizing the visara style or or they have adopted the visara style so major big big uh, temples have been created during the rashtrakuta rashtrakuta period in the ellora hills the best example is the kailasnatha temple apart from that the chalukyas also created wonderful monuments in the visara style at the eye hole and there is a place called eye hole there also you will find very beautiful structures temples in the visara style so this is a brief about the visara style about the temples or examples uh, when it comes to uh, the nagara style and the dravida style many plenty of examples are there almost all the temples that are created in the north india they belong i mean they are known with the nagara style whether it may be temples in odisha uh, whether it is uh, temples at madhya pradesh temples at varanasi kasi etc many places temples at mathura all these temples they are built in the nagara styles so however there are several regional variations also uh, these three regional variations are the odisha style and the solanki style and one more style is there so broadly we also can divide the uh, types or sub schools in the nagara styles uh, nagara style Uh, at the eastern side we will call this as odisha style odisha style uh, to the uh, western part of the country we call it as solanki styles so major characteristic feature of this solanki style is step wells right so on the in the middle part of the country there is another sub school when it comes to nagara style we will also study in detail about three these three uh, sub schools Uh, similarly when it comes to south india so there is a big style called as dravida style and that in that also we will see some regional variations uh, before that the great patrons of uh, dravida style were pallavas and after them the uh, cholas great uh, the greater cholas they have produced great variety and voluminous temple architecture so that we have seen already i mean you might you might know the examples the big temple or brihadeshwara temple at tanjore so many other sites are there which are hosting the dravida style temples so in the dravida style many variations are there so we can divide the variations uh, state by state also like andhra pradesh karnataka tamil nadu or <coughs> broadly we can uh, divide the uh, sub schools based on the dynasties also so i have taken the division based on the dynasties and majorly i am going to discuss discuss about two sub schools that is uh, vijayanagara time uh, art and architecture or temple architecture vijayanagara or vijayanagara sub school and the second one is or for that matter first school is itself is the hoyasala style because the hoyasalas were ruling before the vijayanagara rulers so first sub school is the hoyasala style and the second sub sub school is the vijayanagara style so these two sub schools i am going to discuss in this lecture and at the end i am going to discuss the visara style right so broad uh, divisions if we see first is the dravidian architecture or the uh, dravida style of temple architecture so in this we will see both the both the styles uh, one more division also you can uh, when when there is a question about the temple architecture you can follow this also first are the rock cut temples rock cut temples then stone built temples built temples right right so rock cut temples or these are also known uh, alternatively known as cave temples so after that you can uh, you can mention the stone built temples or you can also call them as alternatively structural temples 
structural temples instead of stone built temples just use the word structural temples uh, better qualification uh, better choice of words to mention these two classifications is the cave temples or uh, cave temples or rock cut temples rock cut temples next category is the structural temples structural temples i meant uh, is they have built brick by brick or stone by stone right so the major differences these uh, differences also you can take right so these are the subdivisions however i am going to uh, divide these schools uh, i am going to discuss the dravidian style uh, with the help of their two important sub schools the, uh, that is poyasala sub school and the vijayanagara sub school so some of the beautiful temples you can say now uh, you can see here so this first temple is the big temple or it is also known as the brihadishwara temple brihadishwara temple it is there at tanjavur or tanjore which was the capital of the cholas and it is built by raja raja 1 raja raja 1 right so second temple it is the meenakshi temple meenakshi temple at mathura mathura sorry not mathura at madurai at madurai meenakshi temple it is also known as the madura meenakshi temple right so this is about the brief information about the dravida style of architecture or dravidian style of temple architecture next is the nagara style it is also alternatively alternatively known as north indian style right so there are specific features are there for each and every style we will discuss about them right so these are some of the temples you can say i think this is the lingaraja temple or the first one is the lingaraja temple and this type of temple temple you see in odisha right so these are some of the examples of nagara style of architecture apart from that you will see uh, the vesara style of temple vesara type of temples so you will see the uh, vimana on the temple is not that much big that you usually see in the uh, uh, sorry shikara uh, sorry vimana only shikara is different uh, so not much big as you will see in the north indian and south indian temples so uh, generally the vimana will be uh, pyramidical shape in the nagara style and uh, sorry speri uh, spherical shape in the nagara style or uh, you will see pyramidical shape in the dravida style but however you will see a blend of uh, mixture of those two styles here in the vesara style so vesara style is nothing but a combination of both nagara style and the dravida style of architecture right so this uh, temple uh, specific temple it is there at uh, somanathapura so this temple is at somanathapura uh, this temple the god uh, who is designated god here is chennakeshava so Chenna, this is chennakeshava temple uh, which is there in somanathapura present day karnataka mysore district or i think mandi district uh, he is having this temple right so uh, common features if you see garbagruha will be there mantapa will be there gopurams will be there so these are the common feature for each and every uh, uh, style so apart from that you will see multiple shrines multiple shrines or uh, panch uh, one more common feature will be panchayatana style panchayatana style and dwarapalakas 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 are gatekeepers at the uh, doors of the garbagruha or at the mantapa also you will find the dwarapalakas so these are the common features for all the three styles of architecture especially the nagara style and the dravida style so in the mains examination you will get a question about the compare and contrast the features are the architectural styles that is dravida style and the nagara style so in that question whenever that type of question is asked first you have to write the common features so these are some of the 
common features garbhagriha will be there so sometimes you will see multiple garbhagrihas also and the mandapa is mostly there however in the dravidian style of architecture especially in the vijayanagara style you will see very very big mandapas that that have come to be known as the kalyana mandapas however in the uh, nagara style also you will see small mandapas uh, gopurams will also be there on the uh, garbhagrihas that you will see apart from that uh, multiple uh, multiple shrines and multiple garbhagrihas i have mentioned side by side you will see multiple garbhagrihas next uh, the temples are constructed all the temples that are there in the indian subcontinent so broadly they have followed the panchayatana style apart from that one more common feature you will also see is the presence of dwarapalakas so in the south indian temples you will see garuda so mainly you will see garuda as the dwarapalakas in the north indian uh, north indian style nagara style you will see the river river or river goddesses the ganga yamuna or you will also see the yakshas and yakshis yaksha and yakshi so these are yakshas and yakshis are semi divine gods and goddesses and they will be there as dwarapalakas broadly you will see the river goddesses only Gang, uh, yamuna ganga etc right so these are the common features now we will see special aspects and special aspect of each and every temple so first is we are going to study about the nagara style all right so majorly you will find this nagara style in north india north india so right ne region so it is flourished in north west and eastern india except bengal so bengal we have a different style all right particularly in malwa rajputana and kalinga regions all right so base of the temples if you see they are constructed on a simple stone platform unlike the elaborate plinth seen in the dravidian style so they are uh, nagara style temples are built on a raised platform so it is, it is one of the important features next they have shikara right so shikara is the most uh, uh, recognizable element so here in this picture this is the shikara right all right so uh, most recognizable element a tower above the garbhagriha it has a curvy curvy linear spear like uh, the pyramidal vimana uh, sorry the north indian style it is a curvy linear structure curvy linear structure in nagara style uh, we, uh, apa, i mean unlike the dravidian style you have a pyramidal pyramidal structure pyramidal vimana so that is the major difference he is i mean the that is the major difference mentioned in the point so in south indian temples it is known as vimana in dravidia uh, sorry in nagara style it is known as uh, sh uh, shikara right right so there can be multiple shikaras also with the tallest one directly above the main garbhagriha so here you will see multiple shikaras so different different deities will be there uh parallelly they will be placed so on each uh, we can say the garbhagriha of a particular god there will be a shikara so you will see a different or uh, sorry uh, multiple shikaras in the nagara style so sub styles if you see there are majorly three main sub styles that is odisha style chandel style so odisha style uh, it is uh, eastern part of the country chandela style it is in the mid i mean in the madhya pradesh uttar pradesh uh, region you will find the chandela style and uh, solanki style or solanki school uh, you will find in the western part of the country right these are the regional variations we are going to see about the regional variations so here example you will see the khajuraho, khajuraho temple of madhya pradesh right so uh, if you see the lingaraja temple uh, odisha it is there in odisha this is the lingaraja temple it is there in bhubaneswar right so here another temple uh, konark temple sun temple it is also alternatively known as sun temple it is there in konark right so these are some of the examples of nagara style of temple right 
Now we will see the special features of one of the sub schools of Nagara style that is Odisha school. Right. It is also alternatively known as Kalinga school. Right. So it is one of the sub schools of the Nagara style. So one of the special or specific characteristic feature of it is presence of dual. So that is uh, dual means in uh, Odisha language Shikara only. Right. So this is the uh, crowning elephant of the temple. It is called Diol in Odisha. It is a most distinctive feature of the Kalinga style or Odisha style. Right. Unlike the typical curvilinear Shikara in the Nagara style, it ha the Odishan Diol rises vertically for most of its height before sharply curving into inwards uh, in the top. So best example you see in the Lingaraja temple only. So you will see straight or here also you will see the shikara being straight suddenly at the top it is curving suddenly inwards so this is the peculiar feature of the odishan style right uh, in those shikaras also again there are subtypes uh, in duels also there are subtypes so reka duela reka duel so most common it is the most common associated with vishnu and shiva temples uh, Pida duel will be there. So it is also similar to Reka duel, but with a slightly different curvy linear top will be there. Next is Kakara duela. So it is a cylindrical uh, tower often used in Chamunda and Durga temples. So these are the still sub sub styles of duel in the Odisha style. Right. Apart from that, you will also see the presence of Mandapas. So these halls are preceding the duel. They are called as Jagmohan in the Odisha school. So in the uh, Odisha, you will also see the Mandapas, uh, Mandapa halls uh, preceding the duel or the Garbagruha that is known as Jagmohan. Right. Ground plan, if you see, right, the main temple is uh, usually built on a square base, but the crowning Mastaka or highest point is round. Uh, creating a visually interesting contrast right so if you see the base it is a square shape but if you see the peak of the shikara it will be a circular it will be a circular one so because of that it will create a very interesting feature uh, right uh, def decoration if you see the exterior parts of the orison temples are richly decorated with carvings depicting deities geometric patterns and integrate for plural motifs right the interiors are generally simple example if you see lingaraja temple in Bodhi, uh, bhuneshwar jagannath temple at puri and the sun temple at konar so these are the best example of odisha style or kalinga style of temple architecture right so this is one sub type second sub, sub type is chandel sub school right so this is the second category in the uh, Nagara style of architecture. It is also known as Kajuraho style, right? This is a distinct sub style flourished under the patronage of the Chandola, Chandela dynasty in central India during the period of 10th and 11th centuries, right? So you will see a unity of design. All the temples are built in a unique and the same style, right? So uh, generally you will see the entire temple complex is conceived as a single harmonious unit. So in instead of different different styles, the entire temple, comp comp uh, temple, complex, temple complex will be seen as a unified unit. So you will see curvilinear shikaras, right? So the shikaras, they are curvilinear, a, characteris a characteristic feature of Nagara style. However, the Chandel, Chandel Shikaras have a more pronounced and elegant curvature compared to other substyles. Uh, apart from that, you will see another important feature that is multiple Shikaras. Right. So presence of numerous miniature Shikaras rising from the main tower and a smaller flanking structure. So this creates a visually stunning and layered effect for the temple. Uh, you will also find the richly carved exteriors in the Chandela style or the Kajuraho style. Right. 
you will see intricate carvings depicting deities, celestial beings and geometric patterns and even sensual themes inspired by the Kam Sutra. So Chandela, Chandela temples you will also you will see many scenes that are described in the Kam Sutra. Right. Material used is sandstone is a primary uh, is the primary material in the Chandela temples allowing for the creation of these elaborate carvings. Right. So uh, famous examples are Kajuraho temples uh, in Madhya Pradesh. They are UNESCO World Heritage Sites recognized by UNESCO. Right. So here in the image you can see the Kajuraho temples. Apart from that Vishnu temple at uh, Chhatrubhuj, Madhya Pradesh. This is another example. And the Shiva temple at Kandari, uh, Shiva temple at Kandariya Mahadeva. It is also known as the Kandariya Mahadeva temple uh, at the Kajuraho. These are the famous examples for Kajuraho style or the Chandela. Next style is Solanki style. Right. So it is also known as Marugujara style. Right. This is the another name for the uh, this style, Solanki style. So you will majorly find this style in the northwestern part of India, uh, particularly the present day states of Gujarat and Rajasthan. Right. So they have patronized, uh, they have built during the Solanki dynasty uh, during the period of 10th to 13th centuries. Distinctive features if you see plain walls. So you will see plain walls uh, both in the interiors and the exteriors of the temples. Right. So the focus is on ornamentation, uh, I mean the focus of ornamentation shifts to other features here. Next uh, you will see interconnected halls, so uh, interconnected halls are there. So this is the unique characteristic, it is the seamless connection between the Garbhagriha that is Sanctum Sanctorum and the Mandapa hall, both internally and externally they are connected. So this creates a more integrated and the flower flowing space in the temple. Uh, another very very uh, characteristic important characteristic feature is presence of step wells. Uh, they are also known as the Surya Kunds. So they are often accompanied by step wells. They are called as Surya Kundas, elaborately designed with the <coughs> descending staircases and ornamental carvings. So these have served as a functional source of water and a place for religious uh, rituals. Right. So this is about the step wells. Apart from that you will also see decorative elements. So while outer uh, walls are plain, the Solanki school makes a statement with the intricate, intricate ornamentation in other areas. So elaborate uh, ceilings you will see the interiors particularly the mandapas they have explicitly carved ceilings that appear almost dome like. So these ceilings are adorned with intricate floral and geometric patterns. Next uh, you will also see detailed doorways. So doorways are, are also elaborately are uh, richly decorated with the sculptures depicting deities, geometric designs and the floral motifs. You will also see inner wall carvings. So the inner walls of the temples, uh, temple complex, uh, they have been decorated with carvings, <coughs> right? So they, that cannot cannot be ex, cannot be uh, specially seen in the Nagara styles. So some of the examples of this style, so Lanki style or Maru Gujara style, are the Sun Temple at Modera, Gujarat, right? <coughs> So this temple, uh, temple is known for its uh, impressive uh, mandapa with a beautifully carved ceiling and a step well also is present there. Right. So this, you can see here the step well and also the temple. So this is the beautiful step well very well carved and uh, interconnected steps are there. Next is Rani, Rani Ki Wow, Queen's step well. So it is there in Pathan, Gujarat. So this is an elaborate step well commissioned by a queen, show causes the architectural mastery of Stolanki, uh, Solanki school uh, with its multi-storied descending stairs and ornamental. So one thing you have to remember that this step well is also re uh, recognized as a UNESCO 
World Heritage Site. It is recognized as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Right. So World Heritage. It is also recognized as a World UNESCO World Heritage Site. Right. Next example is Nilakanta Mahadev Temple at Gujarat. Right. This is also uh, this is ded dedicated to Lord Shiva. It is another illustration of Solanki schools emphasis on decorative ceilings and doorways. So this is about the Solanki school of textual architecture. Next. So next you will see the another important uh, type of architecture that is uh, Dravidian uh, school of architecture or Dravidian style. Right. So predominantly you will see it in the uh, southern part of India. So geographical reach if you see it is there uh, it is you will find this in tamil nadu karnataka andhra pradesh kerala andhra pradesh includes present day andhra pradesh and tamil nadu also so special special feature of it is the towering vimanas there we are cover, uh, we are calling the tower that is there on the garbhagriha as a shikara here we will uh, call it as vimana so you will find huge tower on the major Garbhagurha that is known as the Vimana, right? So the most recognizable element of a Dravidian temple is Vimana, the pyramidical tower that rises majestically above the main sanctum sanctorum, right? So here the shape of the, uh, unlike the curvilinear shikaras of North Indian temples, Vimanas are uh, tired and adorned with intricate carvings, sculptures, depicting deities, mythical creatures and the geometric patterns. So another important feature is compound walls and gopurams. So you will see the entire temple is uh, covered or uh, <coughs> circled with a compound wall and it will have four gateways. So if this is the compound wall for all the sides, basically it will have entrances and on this entrances you will see huge gopurams built. So this is also another characteristic feature of the Dravida styles. So these gopurams also, they are intricately carved and they, many motifs will be there. I mean, many sculptures will be there of the deities and the celestial uh, bodies, etc. You will find the uh, sculptures, paintings, depicted uh, scenes from Hindu, depicted scenes from the Hindu mythology also you will find on the these gopurams. Right. Mandapas also you will see. So multi-pillared halls called mandapas uh, is a common feature in the Dravidian temple complexes. So these halls serve various purposes such as congregations for worships, performances and resting spaces for the uh, <coughs> people who are visiting the temples. The pillars and the ceilings of these mandapas are often richly decorated with the carvings and sculptures. So the mandapas during the Vijayanagara period, they have grown very, very hugely. So that, I mean, these uh, mandapas are at that time known as Kalyana mandapas. They are specifically known as Kalyana mandapas. So you will also see granite construction. So they are primarily built with granite, a strong and durable material that allows for the creation of massive structures that have with, withstood the test of time. Substyles you will see, the Dravidian architecture has five recognized substyles, each with slight variations. First is Rekha Vimana, this is the square shaped base, pyramidical tower with a barrel vault of roof. Next uh, style is Dravida Vimana, similar to Rekha Vimana, but with a wagon shaped roof will be there. Next is Vali Vimana, it, ha it will have the circular base, barrel vault, roof. Next is Chola Vimana. It is cylindrical uh, base, barrel vault roof with a bulbose final. Bulbose final means, so this you will see, this is the bulbose final. A spherical or we can say circular, boulder like, uh, I mean top will be there on the uh, top of the uh, Vimana. Vimana. So that is known as Bilbo's final. Next is Sasta Vimana. So it is elliptical base, barrel vault, roof will be there. So these are the 
different types in the uh, shikara or vimana of the dravidian style so if you see some of the examples of uh, dravidian style of architecture first the best example is brihadeswara temple or big temple that is there in tanjavur so it is a unesco world unesco world heritage site that is recognized <laughs> it is recognized by world uh, unesco as world heritage site next is meenakshi temple at madurai tamil nadu right so here you will see the meenakshi temple of mathura next is virupaksha temple at hampi karnataka so it is built during the vijayanagara uh, time right so it is a uh, temple complex part of ruin of vijayanagara exemplifies the intricate details and the craftsmanship of dravidian architecture right so this is the these are the some of the famous examples for dravidian architecture so two regional styles we are going to uh, we are going to see in the uh, dravidian architecture also so first one is the hoyasala architecture so hoyasala rule we will see in the present day karnataka uh, they have ruled between 10th and 14th centuries right right so they are uh, exceptionally known for their intricate and detailed temple carvings so the features characteristic features of the hoyasala school are richly carved soapstone so for the construction of temples soapstone is used so try to remember this uh, point <coughs> all right so the soapstone is used so the special characteristic feature of this uh, soap uh, soapstone is so once immediately it is excavated it will be very soft so within the 4 to 5 hours after the excavation the whatever the carvings or the depiction or uh, drawing of the or sculpt sculpting the uh, images of the gods or celestial bodies that will be done so after within few hours like 4 to 5 hours after excavating it it will become very hard so whatever we have to carve on that so first few hours uh, it will be easy for uh, them to carve on them so uh, the specific characteristic feature of the soapstone is so within the few hours it has been extracted it will be very soft so whatever the carvings have to be done they will be carved on the stone then uh, after few hours it will become very hard then it will be used for construction in the temple so that is the uh, speciality of the soapstone so it is a fine grained material uh, that allowed for creation of uh incredibly detailed sculptures and reliefs so other important characteristic feature is star shaped uh, uh star shaped planes uh, plants you will see so the base of the temple will be star shaped so you will see these kind of uh, this kind of base for the temples so star shaped base will be there so basically you have the eight corners you you will have for this temple so this will uh, create visually it will create a very good impression next you will see layered hoyasala towers you will see layered hoyasala towers so the towers above the sanctum they were adorned with intricate uh, friezes depicting mythological stories floral and geometric patterns and various deities also these friezes they were arranged in a horizontal layers creating a tiered effect so in the images previously we have seen that the tiered uh, structures next is uh, salas shalas also we can call them shalas or halls so we you will also see elaborately called uh, carved halls with pillars and intricately designed ceilings they were prominent feature of hoyasala temples so these are the characteristic features of the hoyasala temples please try to remember the char characteristic features examples are Chennakesha temple uh, Chennakeshava temple at Belur it is also a world heritage site recognized by UNESCO next is Hoyasala Hoyasalaeshwara temple at Halebidu and this is second example and the third example we can see is the Somanatha Somanathapura temple at uh, Somanathapura uh, Chen sorry Chennakeshava temple at Somanathapura this is also there at the uh, there in the Karnataka right so this is about the hoyasala uh, school of temple architecture next now we will see the vijayanagara school of architecture so vijayanagara 
uh, it has uh, i mean the uh, vijayanagara empire flourished between 14th and 16th centuries centuries right so it to draw inspiration majorly from the dravidian and chalukyan styles resi- resulting in a unique blend of architecture right so you will see massive pillar halls i have give a told earlier earlier also so these massive pillar halls uh, mandapas these used to be known as mandapas so this particular uh, halls uh, that the peri- uh, in the period of the vijayanagara empire they are uh, they are called as kalyana mandapas kalyana mandapas right so they are known for grand and uh, spacious pillared halls they are called as mandapas these halls were supported by massive pillars with intricate carvings and the sculptures so next you will see sculptural grandeur also so apart from uh, temples you will apart from temple construction you will see huge sculptures within the walls and also outside the walls also you will see uh, in the nearby surroundings of the temple you will find huge sculptures right that is thing next is intrication of or integration of dravidian elements it is incorporated the vijayanagara style incorporated the elements like gopurams those are monumental gateways and vimanas from the dravidian style often with a grandier scales so examples are best example is virupaksha temple at hampi right it is part of the ruins of vijayanagara empire so you will see virupaksha temple at uh, hampi so that is the example right next is krishna temple at hampi so this is another example or another prominent example right so this is about the uh, vijayanagara uh, sub style in the dravidian architecture right so third category i was mentioning apart from nagara and dravida styles that is the vesara style so it uh, flourished it emerged during the 17th century and uh, it was there till 14th and 15th century major <coughs> pattern patterns of this style are chalukyas and hoyasalas and apart from rashtrakutas also i mean rashtrakutas are also associated with the vesara style of temple architecture so majorly you will see the fusion of elements in the this style of architecture ground plan if you see it incorporates often incorporates elements from both both dravidian and nagara styles the basic plan might be square with a uh, star shaped design this is the dravidian influence incorporated in some uh, temples next you will see shikara shikara the superstructure above the sanctum is a key element in the vesara style also so unlike the tall pyramidal uh, pyramidal vimanas dravidian style or curvilinear shikaras of nagara style the vesara shikara is a typically shorter and has pyramidal profile with a rounded circular base so this is the special characteristic feature of vesara style decoration if you see the ornamentation finds a middle ground between the two styles vesara temples have intricate carvings and uh, friezes like the dravidian temples but not as extensive as in the dravidian temples right uh, they have uh, majorly followed simple decorations uh i mean compared to detailed sculptures in the nagara temples right right so vesara developed its own unique decorative motifs including miniature shikaras and uh, adorning the exteriors these are the characteristic features <laughs> unique uh, features if you see open ambulatory walkway so the for the for doing the pradakshinas uh, around the temple around the temple you will see open ambulatory walkway so this is one unique characteristic feature of vesara style so so you will see a covered ambulatory pathway around the sanctum allowing for circumambulation by devotees uh, this is not a feature typically seen in dravidian temples uh, you will see unraised platform so you will not often find the raised platform unraised platform will be there uh the emphasis is there on the pillars and the doorways so it places a strong emphasis on the design design of pillars and doorways the pillars are uh, be similar to that of the uh, shekhari or uh, bhumija types seen in the north indian temples while the doorways are often richly decorated 
so these are the some of the unique features of the vesara style uh, best example if you see the chennai kesava temple at belur karnataka <coughs> it is the best example of the vesara style next is the lord khan temple at high Ih- hole so this is the another example so this is the lord khan temple lord khan temple at high uh, uh, hole these are the best example next another very very important temple is kailasnath temple at ellora maharashtra that you will find at the ellora caves ellora caves kailasnath temple so this is a rock cut temple the rock cut temple not a structural temple it is a rock cut temple and the entire temple is built from a uh, single rock right so that is the kaila- uh, characteristic feature of the uh, these are the some of the important examples of the vesara style right so these are the uh, some of the aspects about the three styles of architecture that you will find in temple architecture now we will see some questions so first question it is asked in 2021 the question is with the reference to chausanth yogini temple uh, situated ni- near <coughs> uh, uh, morena consider the following statements first statement is it is a circular temple built during the reign of uh, kachapagata dynasty yes this is a correct statement it is the only circular temple built in india this is a wrong statement many other uh, temples are also there which are built in a circular form third statement is it was meant to promote the vaishnava cult in the region no it, this is the wrong statement it was not built to uh, not built to promote the vaishnava sect next is its design given uh, rise to a popular belief that it was the inspiration behind the indian parliament building the old parliament building which was in the circular shape yes this is a correct statement so statement 1 and 4 are correct so this is uh, the first question statement 1 and 4 are correct next question is uh, which of the following is or are famous uh, for sun temples so you may not directly get the questions on uh, dravida style or vesara style or nagara style so specific questions also you will get so these i mean questions like these also you can get so this is uh, another question so the ex- uh, temples given here arasavelli temple it is there in andhra pradesh amarkantak omkareshwar so the correct option is option uh, a only one temple arasavelli temple only dedicated to sun god these two temples amarkantak and omkareshwar temples are they are dedicated to shiva right correct option is option a right another question last question it is uh, asked in 2012 so i mean long time back but it is a very direct question and it is very easy question uh, the question is the nagara dravida and vesara are what right so very very easy question uh, for you to answer so three main styles of indian temple architecture right so this is it for today thank you thank you thank you for joining the class uh, see you next time until then have a good day right. see you next time